Let's turn our Bibles to the book of James, James chapter 4. James chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 1 through 3. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. The title message is, Are You Breeding Properly? Are You Breeding Properly? James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Brother Caleb, can you pray for the message? Father, thank you for bringing us today, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to be reaching every person who's in here, Lord. Lord, we have, we see some, some familiar faces, we see some new faces, Lord, and we see some people who are especially thankful to have today, Lord. Father, for anyone who could have made it today, we really please do love them, whether they be for health reasons. Please uh, yield them, help them to join us next time, Lord. Father, as Pastor Jesus, Pastor, to preach your word to us, Lord. About breathing properly, Lord, we ask you to please bless him, fill him with the Holy Spirit, yeah, Lord, and open our ears and our hearts so we can really listen to it and apply it to our hearts personally, Lord, on a personal and spiritual level, Lord. Father, we pray that you please do with it and us for the end, the entirety of the day. Close with the Holy Spirit, Lord, have, let us have some good fellowship, Lord, and please bless us, Lord, and peace be with us. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Are you breathing properly? Maybe some of you guys are wondering, you know, what does that mean? You know, I'm breathing right now. You were dead in spirit before you were saved, before you trusted Jesus Christ. You were dead, right? Dead things don't breathe. I mean, go to the cemetery. You know, I haven't seen any you know, dead person you know, breathe, right? right? And then you could check people's breathing. You, know. you could check your own breathing. You know, put your finger underneath your nose, right? And you know, hopefully air flows. You know, don't try to smell it too much, right? You don't know where your fingers came from. However, you know, you're breathing, you're sitting, you're alive. However, you know, as Christians, you know, you don't breathe properly when it comes to your prayer life, when it comes to speaking with the Lord. You know, have you ever thought about your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ essential to your breathing, essential to your spiritual Christian life, right? If you don't talk to the Lord, if you don't have any fellowship with the Lord, you're not breathing properly. Spiritually speaking, in order for you to you know, feel alive, in order for you to you know, be on fire for the Lord and you know, be sold out for the Lord and feel like you're alive, you have to talk to the Lord. When you don't talk to a person, that person as might as well you know, consider them dead. Right? If you have your wife and if you have your husband, if you don't talk to them, if you don't treat them well, or you just, you know, decide to block them off, you consider them like a dead person, right? You know, people get into bitter, you know, argument, you know, they get into this dispute, and people don't talk to each other, right? And, you know, you give them a phone call, they don't even answer, right? And they're like, okay, is that person dead to me, right? The thing is, in your spiritual life, if you do not talk to the Lord on a regular basis, you're not breathing properly. You're not that Christian who has a closer relationship or close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Then you have to realize and recognize, man, am I really talking to the Lord like I should? I mean, conclusion of the message is this. Like 24-7, your attitude should be that whatever I do, wherever I am, you know, whatever I'm thinking, I'm conversing with the Lord. He should be part of your life. And he should be the one who's giving you that life. You know, he should be the one who's giving you that, you know, kick, you know, as you say, in your behind. He should be the one who should be determining every decision of your life. Do you want to talk to the Lord on a daily basis? Do you want to talk to the Lord, you know, every moment? Not just, you know, 
you know, specific time that you set out for the Lord, right? Maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, or maybe at night, right? Evening time? No, but do you talk to him on a regular basis? Think of it like this. If you and I try to hold our breath, right, for long periods of time, you know, we're going to struggle and suffer, and we might even die. In, spiritual, in spiritually speaking, you are almost dead all the time. Like you should be talking to the Lord on a regular basis. It's like it's your breathing mechanism. Like, Lord, you know, blah, 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 blah. This, this, that, that, that. But, however, you talk to him like so rarely that, you know, every time you talk to him, you're talking with a, you know, like heavy breathing. Oh, Lord, whew, you know, I mean, I'm alive again, right? So there are so many Christians, you know, whether you admit it or not, you're like on that, you know, life support. Just when you need the Lord, you come to him. You know, but that's the majority of Christians. But there are a few out there who's constantly, you know, speaking to the Lord, who's really their, you know, spiritual lungs are very healthy, right? You know, they could run a mile, they could run a marathon, and it's fine with them. But, you know, don't tell me that, you know, you're willing to even run, you know, one mile in your current spiritual state because probably you're going to faint. Because of things of the world, everything's happening around you. You know, forget about the person that you need to speak to the most. It's not, I'm not saying that you should, you know, forget about speaking to your loved ones, right? You know, that's a part of life. But the Lord should be the one that you speak to the most. I mean, some people love to talk. I mean, I see you. You, know, you have that personality. You might be extrovert. And then you, you just love talking to people, whether it's about salvation, whether it's about, you know, just general things in life. That, that tells me that you could talk, and you talk very well. However, are you really talking to the Lord like you should? Are you really talking to the Lord Jesus Christ more than any person that you ever talked to? Because when you're driving, you have time to talk to the Lord. When you're by yourself, you have time to talk to the Lord. You know, wherever you are, even if you're talking to someone just like Nehemiah prayed, right? When he was having conversation with a king, you know, he talked to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord. Then when you look at your Christian life, I mean, how often do you talk to the Lord? I mean, it's a part of your life. Or is it something that you only do it on a certain time, you know, set a time? Because when you set some time, you're going to miss it. But don't tell me that you're the person that who makes it to every appointment with the Lord. It's impossible because you're a human being. You could try, you could get to as perfectly as possible, but you're not. However, if talking to the Lord is part of your life, it's 27 thing for you just like breathing, because you breathe 24-7. If you were to talk to the Lord like you're breathing, then he's going to be part of your life. Then you're going to be closer to the Lord. Then you have less issues in your life. Why is it that I have to tell you and you have to tell me that we need to learn how to breathe spiritually? Why? Because we live in sin. Because you know, we're backslidden. Because we don't think of it as important priority. When you get on the car, you know, get inside of the car, I don't know. Sometimes there are things that you do, right? What's the first thing that you do? You know, for some, right, you pray, right? For some, you turn on your favorite radio station, right? And for some, you call on somebody, right, that you want to talk to over the phone. However, number one thing always should be that, you know, you pray to the Lord, right? You pray to the Lord. And if that's not it, that's not the only thing. Throughout the whole thing, you could have conversation with the Lord. You know, don't think that you could only see the Lord and speak to the Lord on your knees only, right? You could talk to him anywhere you are. You could speak to him even right now. I mean, sometimes you're like, Lord, I do want to get something out of this message today. Uh, you know, my week wasn't the best. Or you could say my week was the best, but I really want to be you know, be spoken, you know, you know, talk through the pastor, right? And my heart is open. And like, as you listen and you're so immersed with the Lord, oh man, Lord, thanks for, you know, reminding me. Thanks for convicting me, right? I needed this, right? Thank you, Lord. Instead of someone like, okay, 
uh, what, what's today's message about? Oh, is that for me? Is that for her? Is that for, you know, I think it's definitely for that person, definitely for that person. And then you're like, ah, you know, it's just another Sunday I come and, you know, just part of my daily routine. It becomes like a robotic, becomes like a job, right? And when your spiritual life becomes like a job, then something's wrong. Right. Right? You, know, you, you and I don't come to church because it's only Sunday. You come to church. Why? Because you want to get something out of the message, because you want to have fellowship with the brethren, you know, because you want to be fed spiritually. Amen. We have great lunch, right? So you don't want to just come here just to be fed physically. That should be secondary. It should always be, I'm here because I want to be fed spiritually. You know? it's, not, it's not something that you, know, you can't just do it overnight. It's something that has to, you got to take step by step. Right? Sometimes you hit a roadblock. Right? Because all the things that's happening in your life, and then you start going, man, is this all there is to a Christian life? You know, and I'm having trouble with my family. I'm having trouble relationship-wise, at work, everywhere else. You're having your self-pity party. But do you ever go to the Lord right away? I mean, if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he's inside of you. You should talk to him, right? I mean, he's your Lord and Savior, but he's also your best friend. Amen. I mean, he's out there. What a friend we have in Jesus. And why don't you ever talk to him? Because he's so distant to you. It's almost like other religions, right? You have to go through Mary to get to Lord. You know, you have to go to this father to get to the Lord and father. I mean, or you have to get through this certain place to get to the Lord. You know, that's, those are all baloney. But that's not what the Bible says. You could have a direct relationship with the Lord. The reason, spiritually speaking, many of you are not breathing well today, right? Well, what are symptoms of people who can't breathe, right? They're weak. They're very weak, right? They can even blow out the candle, birthday candle, right? Because it's hard for them to breathe. They can't walk too well. They can't run too well. You know, physically speaking, when you have a trouble breathing, you can't really move that well. Right. You can't sleep that well. You know, the whole life is just hard. But spiritually speaking, you're the same. You can't breathe that well. That's why when doors open, when church doors are open, you can't go. Because you're too sick spiritually. You're too weak. Like, you know, it's, it's just a common thing, isn't it? If there's a prayer meeting, you should go, right? When prayer meeting's not important to you, it's a great sign that you don't really care about ministry. You know, it's a great sign that you're super backslidden. When Sunday church doors are open, you know, you're there, right? It's just that it just tells you. If you're breathing well, and if you're spiritually breathing properly, prayer meetings, you know, you could run to it, right? Sunday afternoon service, you could run to it. Morning service, you know, you could dash to it. It's like it's not a problem for you because you're talking to the Lord constantly and spiritually speaking, you're healthy. But so many people, it's like a drag, right? Man, someone has to pull you through it. Like, man, it's so hard. And everybody, you start giving every excuse in the world. I'm too tired. Man, if Lord was too tired... He would not have died for you, right? I mean, he shed all his precious blood. He had the most and the best excuses in the world not to go through dying for you and me on the cross. But he went through it. Why? Because he loved you and me. But your excuse is, I'm too tired today. Man, I work like 12 hours, you know? I mean, did you, like, drop sweats of blood at your work? Literally? I mean, were you, like, working so hard that, man, you were just dropping sweats of blood everywhere? I mean, did you lose all your blood? I mean, did you get all your, you know, skins torn apart? I mean, do you look different? Completely different. I mean, you might look a little different, but are you completely different than when you started the day 
and at the end of the day, no, I'm pretty sure I could recognize you. You know, if I saw you 7 in the morning, and if I saw you again at 7 at night, I could see that, oh, your brother so-and-so, your sister so-and-so. But Lord, man, you couldn't even recognize him. But he still went through. He went to the Calvary's cross and died for all of your sins and my sins, shedding his precious blood. So there's no excuse for you and me to say that I'm too tired, I'm too busy to talk to the Lord and do the things that the Lord wants me to do. If coming to church gives you money, I guarantee you're going to come. Can you imagine? You know, all this, we'll, you know, we'll probably have to kick people out. Okay? You show up to, you know, Wednesday night service, prayer meeting, give you 100 bucks. Man, you know, it'll be, we'll have, we'll, it'll be standing room only. Right? Imagine if we say, okay, we'll give you a thousand bucks. Forget it, you know, we gotta start doing RSVP. Right? But since it's not that important to you, it's not important to you like money, you don't care. Right? You're like, oh, why should I go? I've had my day. I'm tired. You know? I'm still saved. And it's okay. And that's your attitude. That's why you don't breathe properly. That's why you're spiritually, whenever Lord were to look at you, you're always having trouble breathing properly because you don't talk to him enough. You don't have that you know, flow of oxygen going through continuously. That's why you have to really, really, I mean, during these last days, right, we're at the end times, you know, by the signs and all the things that we see going on, you know, wars, right? You know, earthquakes, all these, you know, things, right? Homosexual, homosexuality is just running rampant. Right. Everything, like during the days of Noah, Sodom, and Gomorrah, you know, just look at it. We're, we're right there. And your most important thing is not the Lord. Your most important thing is everything else except the Lord. Then you as a Christian has to repent of your ways and get right with the Lord. Because if, it's, if this is not important to you and significant to you, then why do you call Jesus Christ your Lord in the first place if he's not that dear to you? What does it mean to be a Lord and a Savior? Lord means God. I mean, Jesus Christ is God. And Savior is someone who saved you from that eternal lake of fire. Why shouldn't he be number one in your life? Why shouldn't he take up most of your thoughts? Why shouldn't he be the one that you talk to the most? I mean, again, don't get me wrong. You talk to your wife, you talk to your family, your husband. It's the right thing to do. But more than that, you have to talk to the Lord. If you don't talk to the Lord, you'll stay further and further away from the Lord. Simple as that. Right? The more you talk to the, door, talk to the Lord, the closer you get. The less you talk to the Lord, the further you get from Him. That's why some of you, you know, I mean, we talked about first love, right? And it's just like any other relationship, right? Why do you think husband and wife become distance? Why? They don't communicate like they should. They don't talk to each other anymore, right? They just sit at the dinner table, say, how was your day? Good. Okay. Good night. You do your own thing. And do you expect that relationship to grow, deepen, get better? Of course not. When there's no conversation between communication between the two people, then it's going to eventually die out. And it becomes like you know, a tree living with another tree. And you're, you're still alive. You still grow old, but you don't talk to each other. When normal life tells you those things, don't you think that spiritually speaking, it is more important? If you're not right with the Lord, if you're not aligned with Lord Jesus Christ, then everything else, forget it. Right. It's going to be a mess, yes. right? Why should Lord bless you when you don't even talk to him? You don't even consider him number one. 
I mean, would you do it as a human being? I mean, if you have a child, you love him dearly, you give your life to that child, but he treats you like dirt, right? I don't care, you know, the food, the clothes, everything, I deserve it. Give me more and more and more. Man, if you're the father, if you're the mother, you have that child and you have another child who's always thankful, right? Who always thanks or give thanks to you and talks to you. I mean, just as a human being, how would you feel, right? First child, spoiled, rotten. Second child, you have more compassion, you know? You want to give that person more and more. And as a Christian, where do you stand? Are you like that spoiled, rotten child? Are you that you know, child who's always you know, giving thanks, speaking to the Father? There are a lot of things, right? Let's look at our text verse today, James chapter 4. Why is it that you don't have a proper prayer life? Why is it that you don't breathe properly? You know, number one thing is, right? Let's look at verse 2. Ye lust, and have not, ye kill, and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight, and war, ye, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. The important thing is you don't ask, right? Because you don't feel the need. You don't understand the importance of prayer. That's it. You know, if you don't feel the importance and need for certain things, you're not going to work for it. You're not going to strive for it. You're not going to deal with it. If for you, prayer is an important part of your life, the most important part of your life, then you're going to pray all the time. You think you're better than Nehemiah? I mean, how many of you think that you're better than Nehemiah? Your faith, was better, your faith currently is better than Nehemiah, you know, from the Bible. What did Nehemiah do? He prayed, you know, all the time. I mean, think about it. You know, he's praying to the, I mean, talking with the king, and then he prayed to the Lord. You know, that's how we talk about Nehemiah prayer, right? Whatever you do, do you go to the Lord in prayer? That is the question. Whether you're talking to somebody, whether you're going somewhere, right? Whether you're doing any kind of thing, do you go to the Lord in prayer? Or do you think that you could handle it? A lot of times, you're just full of yourself, right? I mean, I look at myself, I'm full of myself. I think that I could do it. You, know, you think that you could do it. I'm like, why do I need the Lord, right? I mean, if you and I want to survive in this world, and I mean survive, you need wisdom from the Lord. You've got to be wise, right? Because you have adversary, the devil, and you have the world, and you have your flesh, trying to destroy you at any moment. And you and I, right, you know, we're pompous. We're like, oh, you know, I could do this on my own, right? You know, just think about driving. Oh, yeah, I could drive. I could do it on my own. I've done this a million times, right? And what do you know? If the Lord doesn't protect you, boom, you get into an accident. And you're like, where was my heart at? Did I pray, right? You know, in my life, I got ticket two times in my life, right? I've been driving for, I don't know, I can't even count anymore, right? Maybe 20 some plus years, 25, I don't know. Number's not that important, just two. And those two times, the only, I remember I got tickets because I didn't pray those two occasions. For whatever reason, you know, I did not pray. And the Lord wanted my attention, right? So I'm thinking, okay, you know, those two occasions, I got a ticket, I deserved it, right? I didn't even pray. And in your life, do you take all of those for granted, right? You think you could do it, right? What if there is a rock, you know, a huge rock, right? If you run over it, you know, it's going to destroy your car. What if there is a, you know, tire just on the freeway, right? A long time ago, a friend of mine, you know, unfortunate, he was driving you know, on the 57 freeway, and there was a tire, you know, just loose tire, just came right in front of me, ran over it, and then, you know, destroyed the car. Came out of nowhere, right? 
You think that you could control all of those? You think you could control all the debris out on the road? You think you could control you know, all these people high driving, right? Whether they're drunk or they're high on drugs. You think you could control them? Oh man, I see them. You know, he's smoking in the car. So I'm just gonna avoid him. I mean, you think you could honestly control? Suddenly, you know, you might have another, you know, influenced driver speeding up behind you and not knowing what to do. I mean, there was a story in Las Vegas, you know, a football player. He was driving his car 140, 150 miles per hour. And there was a car with two people, I believe two people, stopped at the red light. He was drunk. He just had on. Think about it, 150 miles per hour, just hitting that car. And the front car exploded and the people died, right? You think you could honestly protect yourself on your own from somebody you did not see, and then suddenly they come right at you 150 miles per hour right behind you, unless the Lord protects you every second, every minute of the way? Then why do you act like you could handle everything? You have to ask the Lord for wisdom. You have to go to the Lord for every single thing. Amen. You look at your life and you're like, man, why is certain part of my life not that great right now? Yes. Why? You know, maybe it's just you. You're the problem. I mean, did you ever ask the Lord for the, every single step of the way? I mean, whether it's your job, whether it's your school, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your health, Whatever it may be, I mean, do you go to the Lord first? You know, it's never easy to go through any kind of health issues, right? It's never. And especially unless you go through it or you know of your family members who went through it, you know, it's hard. You won't know. But as you go through it and as your loved ones go through it, you have to go to the Lord for every step of the way. Yes. You can't be trusting the doctors above the Lord. Right. I mean, that doctor might have a 100% success rate, but when he does your surgery, maybe he had a bad day. Yeah. Make a yeah. one milli, 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 millimeter mistake of incision, what's going to happen to you? Yeah. Man, you'll be messed up for the rest of your life. But you signed that paper, so they're not responsible. Right. Even those things, there are no 100% certain things. There are zero certain things in your life except death. You're going to die. Amen. Unless the Lord comes back soon, you're going to die. Yes. Then, why do you act like you are in control? You are not in control. When you think you're in control, then you let the devil control you. Amen. Man. Wow, man. I've done such a great job. I got this promotion, you know, me, 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 me. And then you go, oh, thank you, Lord, for giving me a promotion, right? And then, or like, you meet this person, oh, yeah, man, I'm such a great guy, I'm such a great gal, you know, man, that's why they love me. And then you're like, oh, thank you, Lord, you know. I mean, you're always like that. All right, okay. You accomplish something, or even if you're before you're doing anything, you give yourself all the credit, right. and then you go to the Lord. Like, ah, man, my child is such a great child. You know, people say I'm a great mother and great father. And it's me and my wife. And you go to the Lord. Lord, thank you. You know, and what a pompous attitude. You know, what if you know, God forbid, but you know, something gets wrong with your children. What are you gonna say then? Then you're gonna come back and say you're gonna blame God. Like God. You know, I gave you that credit. And the Lord placed the tape. No, you didn't. You gave yourself credit. And I was like secondhand smoke, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Just flowing, that smoke just going and barely touching. And you're like, okay, you know, it's the Lord gave me that thing, you know. No. When Lord wants to, he could give, he could give you the best thing and he could give you the worst thing. Amen. Ask Job, right? Yes. So he will give you the best or the worst. Right. Do you realize it? 
Whatever best that you have is from the Lord. Yes. Whatever worst that you have, because the Lord allowed it. Yes. And why do you play with the Lord then? You know, what's the worst thing when it comes to a relationship? When someone plays with you, right? right. Betrays you. Cheaters, right? Yes. Unfaithful. You know, infidelity. You name it. All of these bad words associated with it. And if that were to happen to you, man, you have fits, right? right. You'll be super angry. You'll be beyond angry. You know, you'll be, you know, think about the emotions, right? Especially people who have gone through it, right? Because many people have gone through it. When you are betrayed, right, by your loved ones, you know, even, you know, cheating, infidel, infidelity, or all those things happening, unfaithfulness. And think about the emotions that you had to go through, and you're still harboring it, and you still can't get over it. But think about what you're doing to the Lord. I mean, you don't even talk to him. You don't even breathe properly. And then you go to the Lord and like, Lord, why? Why me? Why? Before you go to the Lord and gripe and complain to him, just always look at yourself. Just get right with the Lord. At that moment, whenever you feel like, man, I need to gripe, you know, I need to complain and murmur, that just tells you that you have a sin problem. Yes. You have a sin problem, right? You, you get quick to anger, right? You know, every time. It's, a, it's just a normal thing. You know? There's righteous anger, but that's very rare. You know? I mean, in your life, I don't know if you have righteous anger a lot, right? You know? I mean, if you see like, wicked things happening in the world and you're angry about it, man, that's righteous anger. If someone talks you know, bad about Lord Jesus Christ and you're angry, that's righteous anger. If someone talks bad about King James Bible, you know, it's a righteous anger. However, those are very rare, right? A lot of times you're angry because you've done something wrong. A lot of times you're angry because you're the one who made the mistake, yeah. right? And how do you try to cope with it? You try to speak louder and louder. Like your voice gets louder and louder and louder, right? I mean, Lord's like pointing right at you. You're the problem. You are the problem, and you're the problem. And you start screaming like, Lord, it wasn't me, you know. It's the wife, it's the husband, it's the children, it's the job, work, education, everything in between. During the whole time, you know, Lord did not even raise even a single, single decibel. Let me tell you again, it's you. It's you. You're the problem. Yes. I mean, if you were to admit that you're the problem, don't you think the problems will be solved more easily? Oh, yes. I mean, just look at it. Whether it's your, between you and your mom, your dad, between husband and wife and your children, you know. They're like, okay. Why am I getting angry? Probably because you are at fault. Right? And a lot of times, you know, because people have so much pride, I mean, especially men, you know, I'm not saying women doesn't, they do too. I mean, if your husband starts screaming and getting loud and loud, if a wife tells you you're, something's wrong, you know, this is something you should have done and whatnot, then almost all the time, 99 out of 100 times, it's because husband made a mistake. And yeah. you just want to cover it up with your louder voice, right? Amen. Now imagine if your wife had a louder voice than you, then you're oh. screwed completely. Oh. I mean, you're, you're like, oh, man, <laughs> my voice is, you know, not as loud, you know, and I'm just trying to blame, you know, that's, you know, then you'll be at a, you, you look very, very small. You already look small, but you're going to look smaller and smaller. But think about it. The more you gripe and murmur and blame and others instead of yourself and looking at yourself and getting right with the Lord and repent, you become smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. And your capacity to breathe gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And you, it's really, really hard for you to breathe. And before you know it, man, you just give up in your spiritual life. You're like, I'm not going to go to the Lord. My life is a mess. And that's exactly what devil wants. Devil wants you to just give it up. Why should you talk to the Lord every day? You have too many things going on, right? Why should you talk to the Lord? He's not blessing you like other. You start comparing, right? And you, you, you're full of covetousness. Right? He has a house. She has a house. I don't have a house. 
He has a car, she has a car. I don't have a car, right? She got this clothes, that clothes. I don't have it. Shoes, you know, I don't have it. And then you start complaining, complaining and comparing. And they're like, oh, man, maybe just the Lord doesn't care about me. I mean, how do you know the Lord doesn't care about you? Do you even talk to him? You know, it's a common thing that people say. You know, I think the Lord doesn't t- care about me. Why? Because you don't care about him in the first place. Have you ever thought about that? You say, my husband don't care about me. Do you really care for him? My wife don't care about me. Do you really care for your wife? My mommy and daddy don't care about me. Do you really care about them? You, know, you always have to go back to yourself. And in order for you to get that, you need wisdom from God. Let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. That's why you have to recognize that I cannot do anything. Just like the Bible says, I can't do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Don't give yourself credit anymore. Brethren, I mean, the reason you know, you're in a gut, you know, bottom, you know, whatever you call it, toilet, in your spiritual state, is because you constantly give yourself credit. You constantly talk to you only when you should be giving God the credit and talking to the Lord all the time. James chapter 1, verse 5, Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and he shall be given to given him. Do you ask God? You know, he's asking for wisdom. The smartest man ever lived, right? Solomon. Why is this man? He asked for wisdom. Shouldn't you be asking God for wisdom on a daily basis? Yes. Are you that smart? Right? No. Where's Einstein? Right? Where's all those smart people, right? All those CEOs, you know, who made billions and stuff, you know, who invented a lot of stuff, right? If they reject Jesus Christ, they're burning in hell, yes. right? I mean, is that the smartest advice to give to a person? No. No. I don't believe in God who can't do math when God is the, all about the most precise numbering in the whole world I've ever seen. Then why don't you go to the Lord? If you want to have a successful life, just period. If you want to have a successful life, spiritually, physically, mentally, everything, you go to the Lord. You have to go to the Lord and think about the Lord. And if you don't get that wisdom from above, don't think that you're going to have a successful life. Right. You just won't, right? You know, you make wrong decision after wrong decision. Yes. You make wrong friends after wrong friends. You wow. take wrong job after wrong job. You marry the wrong person and you ruin your life. And then you start going to be like that small, small, you know, tickle right there and then you're done as a Christian and devil's like another one check mark it goes to the next one don't be a statistic right don't be a statistic I mean there's millions and millions who's been a statistic right yeah. you don't want to be that statistic that check mark right you've done something for the Lord for a little bit but because of your pride because you didn't think that you know, talking to the Lord is that important. Ultimately, you don't breathe properly, and then you just disappear. You could tell me whatever it is, but man, if I can't breathe, and if I don't breathe for like next 30 minutes or something, I'm going to die, right? It may be even shorter than that. You know, it depends plus or minus. That's why whether it's your health, jobs, relationship, everything has to start with a prayer. Everything has to start with talking to the Lord. You have to. Even the minimal, most minute thing, right? The next step that I take, right? Talk to the Lord about it. Man, how many times did you, and I've done this a lot, I took a, you know, misstep. Man, almost sprained my ankle. Sometimes I sprained my ankle, right? Hurt my knees and stuff. Even those minute things. Why do you not go to the Lord? If you were taught the wrong way, it's time for you to wake up, right? Because certain people will be like, you know, you don't have to pray. The Lord just takes care of you, right? No, it doesn't work like that, all right? You have to have a right relationship with the Lord. If the Lord says it's time for you to die, you die. Who's going to 
who's going to stop, Lord, from your life being over, right? I mean, there, this is a crazy story. I don't know if you've seen it. So a crew from Sky News from England, they were driving through Ukraine. But Russia has a death squad. Their job is to snipe and kill civilians trying to leave the country. And it was all caught on tape. As they were trying to go through this checkpoint, bullets started coming. Think about it, it's real and live. Only thing saved them was their vests. They had helmet, they had their vest. Literally, they were yelling, journalista, you know, I'm a journalist. They kept on shooting. I mean, only by grace of God, they, there was an embankment on the side. You know, they hopped out, and they went into this warehouse. And they, I mean, this guy had like a, two bullet marks in his chest, and vast saved them. And you tell me that God doesn't control life and death, right? Right? I mean, Lord will give you blessing or you'll be cursed. Right. You're alive right now and breathing this air because the Lord allowed it. Amen. That's it. Yes. The Lord says, let's close off your lung, right? Your breathing system. Then what's going to happen? You die. That's why you have to go to the Lord for everything. Thank you, Lord. You know, Lord, you know, you have given me another day to breathe and live, right? Okay, I want to live my day for you. You know, whenever, whatever it is, you know, I'm going to talk to you about it, right? You know, then 24-7, he becomes part of your life. 24-7, you're going to be talking to him. And when Bible says, you know, I will therefore that every man pray everywhere, it's not a foreign concept to you anymore because you're just talking to him. You know, prayer is talking to the Lord, right? And you're constantly talking to him. Then, Lord, whatever he gives you, you know what's best for you. And then you'll stop griping. You'll stop complaining and murmuring. I'm like, you know what? You know, whatever the Lord gives me, I know it's the best because I have a constant communication with him. And I know he gives me what's best for me. Then you're, you're going to be breathing more properly. You're going to be, your breathing will be strong as a Christian. Don't you want that? Yeah. Right? I mean, again, if I lose ability to breathe, I think that's the scariest thing. For whatever reason, I'm lying in the hospital and machine has to help me breathe. And that's a scary thing. You don't want to get to that point, right, spiritually. I mean, literally, some machine has to, you know, help you breathe. I mean, what kind of state are you in? Your vegetable state, right? right? You're like in a coma as a Christian. And when a person is in a coma, they can't do anything for the Lord, right? Yes. But you're going to get to that point. And so many have gotten to that point, and they've never come back. So before you get to that point, before I get to that point, you and I have to examine our prayer life, we have to get right with the Lord, you know, repent of things that need to be repented of, yes. and really make the Lord our life, part of our life. And your attitude will completely change. Amen. It will make a 180 degree difference. Instead of going to the Lord for only things that I need, right. I go to the Lord for everything. Yes. Instead of complaining whenever things go wrong, I'll have a conversation with him so that whenever bad things happen, I know I'm in the right hand. Instead of always worrying and being nervous and discouraged, you have hope, Amen. you have assurance, and you have encouragement through the Lord. Amen. And that attitude will determine whether you're going to be a faithful servant, friend, Christian, child of God, or you'll be that griping, murmuring, discouraged, disappointed, child of God. Which one would you rather be? Don't you want to breathe properly for the yeah. rest of your life until the Lord comes back? Let's pray.